Om Shanti and greetings of peace. Welcome to Insights with Brahma Kumaris. We are exploring our journey on happiness and there was another aspect that we talked about but we shall talk about it in depth today which was the work life and the social life. We are fortunate uh, Sister Meera is here with us today. Om Shanti Sister Meera and welcome to the show. We did talk about something on work life, but uh, I think I would like uh, you to give us a bit more insights because a lot of time, me being a working woman myself, when we go to work, we do find certain challenges uh, to take up the pressure or uh, when it is too demanding, we are unable to take through that pressure. What are the keys that we can use at that time, which can give us the strength to overcome that? I think, uh, first of all, I need to be loyal to work for the money that I earn. And secondly, I have to be honest with myself. If I am given more work than I'm supposed to do, I have to have the courage to say no because many of us take on stress because we feel obligated and we cannot say no to the boss and because I am a bit soft, you know, I am a bit gentle, sometimes they push all on myself <laughs> and then I don't talk and then I feel pressured. So I have to be honest with myself, say nicely. You know, I have other commitments to do. And thirdly, I think we have to understand everything cannot be done on the same day. You know, there is limitation, you know, limitation of our physical energy and limitation of time also. So I need to give priorities. Before I begin my work, I must look into the priorities that needs to be attended and I finish off that first. So it's out of my mind, then I can relax. And one of the techniques I always share with some of our students is, um, you know, bring in some kind of um, a spirituality at work. For example, uh, take a break in between because uh, it is said that, you know, we cannot concentrate on our work more than two hours at a time. Body also needs relaxation, mind also needs diversion. So just like we have coffee break, tea break, I would suggest that take one minute silence after every hour. Just silence, quiet, you know. So that silence of the mind will recharge my battery so I can do the work for the next two hours with quality. So this is something I have seen people who have used this technique, taking that one minute silence every hour, like they take tea break and coffee break, lunch break. So that has helped them to understand their work better and the quality of their work is also good and they don't feel the pressure. There are times where uh, you might be in a communication or you are in meetings which are pretty prolonged where you might not get those momentary because you either you are trying to explain or uh, somebody is asking you things. Uh, if you are unable to get the moment of silence because uh, my perception of silence is yeah you need to be calm and quiet nobody is talking to you and things like that. But if in such scenarios uh, you are answering or you really need to pay attention in the meeting. How can one uh, find that time or what would be the technique that to again empower ourselves to pull through? So it's okay. I have to accept the situation. So I know that I will be in a meeting or I will be in a conversation. So I can do it before 
oh i can do it after yeah. even that also i must not take pressure <laughs> Oh, I did not do it or anything. It is just a kind of a technique that I can use it. So I can do it before or after. It's okay. So it is just yeah. again preparing yourself yeah. before the meeting yeah. and yeah. Yeah. after that. Wonderful. But one of the things I find, you know, those who are working women also face is a conflict with each other amongst themselves, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it does happen. It's not the work that is causing pressure. But there is somebody in the office who don't like you, you know, they don't appreciate the work that you are doing or the boss doesn't appreciate what you are doing. You know, the things like that causes pressure and then you, you feel the interest, you know, you lose the interest. So I think this is something we need to address. You know, um, one of the spiritual aspect we learn in Raj Yoga is uh, about the karma philosophy because sometimes it does happen that you know one particular person maybe in the workplace have certain karmic accounts that I need to settle mm -hmm. so their behavior is not so good to me so I should not react with them I should continue to maintain my good relationship so I settle my account faster but if I continue to have negativity towards that person and create an atmosphere, then it is not good for myself or others. So sometimes I find that, you know, people who are working uh, prolonged in one place for a long period of time, this happens. <laughs> uh, in that sense, I think I'm pretty fortunate because most of my colleagues are all men. But I do understand that, yeah, there are few working women who do face certain challenges because uh, two people trying to impress and the bosses are not getting impressed. But the other challenge that these days uh, we working people uh, go through is about socializing. Quite often a lot of things are being expected from us and uh, the moment uh, you say that uh, you don't drink or you don't smoke, right? Um, people look at you at one eye right? and somehow they will try to be distant from you uh, because as such the entire environment is changing how shall we maintain ourselves and uh, carry ourselves during that time I think I have to uh, be very clear with them that I am not a person of that nature uh, like uh, the one who can smoke or drink, that's not my habit. I, I can be with you, you know, I can, uh, you know, give you company, but I would not indulge in those kind of things. That is not my life. So here, like if I just wanted this, uh, this clarity from you that if I am in that place or the socialization, socializing place, uh, I don't drink. I can be having a coffee or I could be having yeah. any juice. That is fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Because all that they want is your company, not necessarily you have to indulge mm -hmm. in the same habit they are. But one thing, of course, uh, socializing also people think that, you know, brings a lot of happiness is their nightlife, mm -hmm. you know, involving oneself in uh, other kinds of habit. So that one I can say no with without any hesitation because that is not my life at all, you know, because uh, especially uh, you can share from your own experience that how much energy you have saved by not going into nightlife, how much money you have saved and how much, you know, you keep good health. So when we explain to people, you know, this is not uh, my life. So even if they don't accept, I have to just go on with my thing. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do share that when you brought this topic up. Yes, uh, people do admire at times that uh, I'm running around uh, and doing so much at the office and all my things are pretty uh, done on time. 
right? And uh, sometimes they do ask, what is the reason behind? And I'll again tell them that, yes, I do practice meditation and I have certain principles which I really don't let go of. So it gives me that sense of um, mm -hmm. uh, not only firmness, but even that, that lift in the atmosphere where uh, they do accept who I am. But at times I still feel that uh, they are hesitant to talk to me but knowing uh, about my background or the disciplines that I follow. So they are unable to open and at times I feel that uh, I could have done better from a work perspective but just because I'm following these principles I'm unable to get what, what is expected or how can but I... I think once we have already realized uh, it doesn't bring us permanent happiness. It is, after all, a temporary, sensual happiness, you know. I am not looking for that happiness anyway, you know. I, I want something that is staying with me permanently. So I don't want to go for it, you know. Uh, so once my aim is being already fulfilled, I have found something that is already bringing me happiness for all time. Why should I run after temporary you know, when you drink, you, you lose your consciousness, you become happy at that time because you don't know where you are yeah. <laughs> or by smoking or by dancing, you know. It's only temporary and people just do things to impress people, you know. There are certain people, I think, uh, they are actually living two or dual lives. Uh, they could be totally different at home or uh, during the working hours, but at night they are totally different people, right? And because of that, I think quite a number of people or the families are going under stress because of that and the environment is not that good. Mm, what would be your advice to such people who are going through that or maybe particularly if I uh, be point blank either it could be lady doing things outside or the husband could be doing things like that so the person who stays home right what would be your advice to those people to tackle such situations so I think we have to find out you know why the husband or the wife want to go to that kind of life what is what is that I am not giving him or her that is missing for that for that purpose, they have to look out for it outside. So one thing that they can do is to find out and provide that at home itself mm -hmm. so that they don't need to. But if the home is clean, they can't smoke, they cannot drink. So they have to find a place where they can express themselves as they want, mm -hmm. you know. So they go. So then I have to just let go of it. Because when we have created a family uh, kind of a discipline that, you know, because of we are bringing up children and we must create a good atmosphere. So no drinking, no smoking, you know, not late night life because the children will do the same tomorrow. So we have already created that norm at home. So then if they want to do it, and they want to find a place to express themselves, they want to go, we have to just let go. That, uh, that uh, gives me a very beautiful scenario which happened in our work life as well. And uh, I think the family didn't know about husband doing all these things outside and wife was caught by surprise at one time where she found him smoking, right? Uh, it did create a scenario momentarily and then I just still felt that it was for the benefit of the husband because end of the day if you smoke it's not good for your health but some or the other how these are habits. So I would like to touch here about not only smoking or drinking there are certain other habits so, so that people actually do indulge in right. Uh, how to make sure the habits that we are following uh, are good for us or not and where to have that check and balance. So I think any habit that, um, that makes me subservient is not good. Like for example, if you start smoking one day, you want to do it another day, you become addicted. Drugs are also same. So angry is also same. So if I am addicted to any kind of habit, 
without which I cannot live. So that is a bad habit. Mm -hmm. You know, and that actually takes away my character. It brings a stain in my character. And also, I am not a good example. And the most important loss is bad health. Mm -hmm. It damages our health. I think those who smoke, they should know that, you know, one cigarette takes away seven minutes of your life. So what I'm doing, and I'm actually killing myself by smoking, mm -hmm. you know, and drinking alcohol is, it's what is alcohol spirit. So I'm burning myself. Yeah, a lot of people actually yeah. land up with cirrhosis of yes. liver and some other yes. medical ailments. So if I can realize how much damage I'm causing to my health, mm -hmm. so instead of paying doctor's bill after getting sick, why not I use that money to keep myself healthy so that I don't have to go to a doctor, <laughs> you know, and also I become a good example in the society. Today we remember people like Vivekananda, Mahatma Gandhi and other people because of their type of life they lived, you know, that inspired people. Uh, what is human beings like, you know? So it's up to each one. Uh, what kind of habit? See how a habit is formed. See, nobody is born with a cigarette. Nobody is born with a bottle. It's something that we develop by looking at others. So any action, whether it is a good action or a bad action, if you repeat it a few times, it becomes a habit. Mm. So if I want to change a bad habit, say angry, but first of all, I have to realize anger is not good. It is fire. It burns me and others. Mm. So I have to replace it by peace. So every time I get the thought of anger, I change into peace. No, I am a peaceful soul. Anger is my enemy. So you will weaken that thought, weaken that thought, and finally it will die out. Mm. But then first of all, I must realize that is not good for me. Mm. Doctors may tell you, other people may give you some advice, but you need to realize yourself. I think uh, the, the point that you brought, a lot of time people when they are sick, they actually go and see doctors. Yeah. And doctors will be... Besides their prescription, they might be telling a lot of list of do's and don'ts. It is again up to the person whether they yeah. follow or not. Yeah. And uh, with that, we can change our habits. Yeah. Uh, do you even feel that these are the small little habits, they actually perform your overall personality? Yeah, means because if you repeat the habit, it becomes a personality. Hmm. Any habit you, re you repeat, it becomes your impression personality. Once it gets into the personality, it's very difficult to change. When, if it is in the stage of the habit, it is possible that good company and influence of some elderly people's advice, atmosphere can help. But once it becomes a personality, it's deep rooted. Then it's very difficult to change. So that is why it is better to, to change the habit, even it is better when you can change your thoughts. Quite often people actually get drifted away with such habits because of the momentary happiness that they mm. obtain. I think that is the main essence we can say. People are not looking for a long, uh, you know, long-term happiness. Mm. They say, uh, who knows? As we say, you know, eat, drink, eat, drink, and be merry. Why worry tomorrow? That is the expression, you know. So, but actually, uh, if we can have a little bit of foresightedness, mm -hmm. you know, whatever I am doing, I have to face the consequences, you know. So then I will be careful in doing what I am doing. So I think it is very important that, uh, you know, I need to look for happiness, which is not short-lived. Mm. That is why people go for all these uh, social life, bad habits, because it gives them temporary ecstasy, mm. you know, temporary intoxication. They feel that they are on the top of the world, you know, then but then, then uh, yeah, after that, it's finished. Mm. But if I'm looking for a long-term happiness, 
it may come to me slowly but it stays with me because it is genuine mm. it is not based on passing phase of life you know it's not like clouds mm. it passes off you know it stays with me that is why they say happiness you know is now here huh? so at the present time i have to be happy i don't have to wait for a long time mm. uh there was another one i got actually this message and these days uh, because of the social media a lot of things are being shared on even mobiles right um people these days judiciously try to be healthy so they join gym because your yeah, working hours are long and things like that but some or the other how you do hear people passing away at a very young age maybe 30s or 40s and leaving behind families who might not even have a clue what the husband was doing why is it so that even after taking care of your physical health they were or they passed away at such a young age without having any sickness oh i think this is something uh, that is inevitable no one can stop it you know when it is time for the soul to leave it has to leave because that is all the part that soul has to play through that body but of course uh, as you said you know now because of working pressure uh, social life pressure people look for alternative to become free from that pressure and stress they do go to gym they practice many types of yogas asanas to some extent uh, definitely it brings them physical health but physical health alone is not complete health mm. so we need to balance it with mental spiritual and social health and so they need to look at some other practices like for example meditation maybe you know medicine meditation balance or physical yoga and spiritual yoga balance a kind of balance so then they are able to take care of their body and soul Mm -hmm. so sometimes it could be possible that you know someone was not taking care of their body so well so they were only into spirituality and so that could have caused damage or sometimes somebody is taking care too much of the body you know and not their mind like and so that. there was a imbalance so it could be possible that some sudden news has brought them to death but of course as i said if somebody is young and suddenly leave their body that shows that that is all the part that soul had in the body so now it's going to play another part mm. you know so that's why we say death has no calendar <laughs> a beautiful thought and i'll uh, say we will talk about and about meditation and how we can have that a uh, physical as well as mental and spiritual balance about it in our next episode thank you for being with us miss om shanti stimira om shanti thank you we talked about work life balance and the family balance we would like to look into more how can we be healthy not only physically but even mentally and spiritually to explore these things in detail please stay tuned for our next episode